Humans are not like they are portrayed in movies or cartoons. In the heat of the moment, they are capable of weathering many injuries. Adrenaline and will are powerful forces that can never be underestimated. Victor knew that. It was why he was still conscious. If he wanted, he could probably get to his feet. The Executioner did not underestimate the human will to survive, but neither did it underestimate fatal wounds. Victor could not escape. Eventually, he would have no choice but to give up and face death, as it was doing every moment of every second. It did not matter if he wished to face that death sitting down or standing up. The Executioner stared at his mutilated body. The sapient cells composing its being lived and died with satisfaction as they'd never done before. There was pride and joy and camaraderie in its colonial form. But the Executioner would continue. Victor would not. As the generations went on, the bliss of its many bodies dulled in realization. Victor had done so much to them, and his last act of cruelty would be to deprive the Executioner of its reason for existence deprive it of the hate that propelled it forward. You have made us pain, but you can take so little, it said to him, testing the idea. Victor winced at this verdict, and the cells jeered at his cringing form. That felt right. It was a shame this would be over so soon. The Executioner built its life around Victor, his mind, his body, his personal spaces. Its greater self had grown to encompass his entire house. It neither understood nor perceived there to be a world beyond those borders. So when the front wall of the house caved in, the Executioner was more bewildered than in pain. Then it was more in pain than bewildered. Its musculature grew taut as it howled an inarticulate fury at this new intrusion. Sunlight and dust mingled at the hole in Victor's house and the body of his attacker. A familiar spiky shape floated in through the opening. It was a shape Victor knew well. In a healthier state, he might have blurted out, EC001? in a tropey exclamation of surprise. As it was, he made a brief gasp and coughed up blood. EC-001, Brian, levitated into the room and took its place near Victor. A single orange aperture appeared on its surface and leveled itself at the Executioner, but did not attack. All three parties seemed to be waiting for the other. Victor moved closer to the hole. The Executioner moved closer to him. Brian moved closer to it. It was the second that finally spoke. You are not him, the executioner said with a slight quiver. We all want him. Brian bobbed, but did not speak. We do not know you, it continued. We will not fight you. It offered in a mix of question and compromise. Brian responded with something like, Opium the Montreal dishware, clear fluid ruminant gear. It did not move from its spot. That is not anything. The executioner's quiver was gone. You are attacking our time. Brian rattled and shifted alignment. It proposed with less certainty. Victor's head was starting to hurt, and not just because of his physical injuries. What the fuck are either of you- <coughs> Victor coughed again and thought of finishing his sentence, but decided it was already complete. The executioner ignored him. It tilted its head at the new intruder, and finally came to a conclusion. You are being pain. You are more of him. It pointed at Victor. We hate all of him. The statement was delivered flatly, with no trace of anger or bitterness. 
One moment the executioner was conveying a message. The next moment it was lunging forward, claws extended. Whatever Brian was, it was slower than its adversary. It jerked back at the sudden movement, but not quickly enough. Two black claws impaled it through the middle with a wet squelch. The executioner made pleased clicks at its seemingly easy victory. It was already rippling with a partially chromatic sheen, replicating something it had found in Brian's essence. Brian's reticule narrowed to a burning slit. There was a noise like several hundred bullets fired at once. The executioner was torn apart in a sudden maelstrom of force. Its body was blown back by the blast, riddled with holes to the point of being a slurry. Only its severed hand, still puncturing Brian's core, left any indication of what it had been. The white and pink mush splattered against the bony tiling and coiling musculature that used to be Victor's entrance floor. It oozed around the organic surfaces and pulled together. Long strands of cellular matter jutted out from this mixture, angrily knotting themselves back together into a skeleton. Victor did not wait to see what happened next. He saw an opportunity and stood unsteadily, using the wall for support despite the pain it gave. There was an intensified gurgle behind him. The rug lapped at his feet and clung to his footwear, trying to slow him down. His right shoe sunk into something dense and unyielding, so he left it behind. The next step, something clung to the remaining sock with an unbreakable adhesive, so he left it behind too. He did not dare put his foot back on the ground until he was past the hole and in the yard. He just had to get away from that house, that thing. Behind him, the executioner reassembled itself. It howled and the house howled with it. It searched for its prey and found nothing inside its recesses. But the executioner was not a mindless thing. It understood that Victor had exited its world and the only way to find him was to do the same. The house cracked along newly formed fault lines. Feelers wiggled in paroxysms of frenzy as the cells prepared to do something they were not prepared to do. What happened next happened in less than 30 seconds. At the four second mark, Victor's house flipped itself inside out. There is no true way to describe the way it did so. Perhaps saying the house shucked itself like an oyster would bring a suitably disquieting sequence to mind but it would not do the real thing justice. Biological viscera spilled out from widening seams. The outer shell of the house folded and crumpled between the blossoming growths. In some places, it was like flipping a waterlogged plank to expose the barnacle growth underneath. In other places, it was like fingers pushing through thinning sheets of protoplasm that once resembled plaster. Tongues grew through shingles and bone crunched through glass. It was a messy transition, driven by desperation and fueled by emotion. At the six second mark, the biological mass was nearly shapeless in its transience. Its form continuously changed as it turned itself outward and sampled the greater universe. Its tongues withered and died to be replaced by the fingers that tapped the dirt and coiled dry and dead under fresh waves of pulsing fatty tissue. Veins slithered through like snakes, flashing bright colours and tightening in rictus motions until the mass resembled the contours of a brain and glowed with unknown chemical signals. It could not be ignored by people in the streets, by the customers in the barbershop, or the two residents in a house that although dingy, was still a house. They noticed the aberration and it noticed them. At the eight second mark, the cells overtook the barbershop. At the nine second mark, they overtook the street and its constituents. They overtook Victor, but were too far beyond themselves to notice this victory. They were something else every second an unleashed existential error that perpetuated its own ascension. At the 10 second mark, the cells had overtaken the block. They grew outward. 
They lived in a space filled with things that were not them. Things that were not them lived inside of their mass. They felt things that seemed alive and things that seemed dead and things that had never been either. There were so many things, far more than the cells had ever considered. They grew inward, recombining with the severed limb of the executioner's form and noticing, really noticing the thing that some called EC-001 and others called Brian. They advanced and replicated their advances through their mass so they could understand the world anew, again and again and again. There was the world, and there was the realm beyond, and there was the place beyond that realm and the thing that made the place and the realm and the maddening soup of potentiality that allowed things like Brian to exist, that allowed the cells to exist. For 17 seconds, they understood more about the universe than any single man ever would, including Peter Pigeonhole. Then, unified in their knowledge, the cells chose death. The total time was 27 seconds. <laughs>